So thank you for your introductions. I do have a couple of slides that I would like to go through uh, quite quickly because I'm hoping we can get down to the good stuff, which is doing some searching. So I called this OER Compass because I wanted to share with faculty some, some ways that you can begin seeking out open education resources that you can use in your classrooms in a variety of different ways. So for those of you that are not familiar with OER, very quickly, I'd like to tell you that OER is considered teaching and learning materials that are released under a Creative Commons license. That's kind of a hallmark of what is considered uh, the, the beginning point of an open education resource. And although many of us think about textbooks first, it's not just textbooks. It can be lesson plans, guides, simulations, software, images, music, videos. There are all kinds of resources being created uh, that can add uh, variety to our courses. So. One of the things to keep in mind of uh, the difference between an OER and a publisher text is this idea that first of all, it's no cost. Not only is it no cost, but you can keep it, use it and share it. And depending on the type of Creative Commons license, you can remix it and you can add to it. You can um, take it, add it with uh, other OERs and, and create a new resource or a new collection. It's really kind of exciting that way, the things that you can do. Now, Creative Commons doesn't replace copyright law. It's a license that uh, you can assign to work that you have uh, created that allows other people to use your work without having to contact you again and ask for permission in a number of different ways. And generally, these resources are uh, distributed to the world, technically, uh, through the Internet. So there, we, you, you've, we've talked in our introduction about some of the reasons why we're looking at OER, uh, but there is a couple of, there's more than what I have on this slide, but there's a couple I wanted to mention. From the faculty point of view, I think the real advantage for uh, using different types of OER is that you have greater content control. Um, so if you've got a textbook that you're not particularly happy with, adding some OER or replacing that text with a or OER can really give you that greater control. And that leads to having more relevant learning materials for your students. Now, from the student's point of view, we do talk about the idea that it reduces the cost of education, and that's very powerful. But I think the other thing is that it gives all students in that class immediate access to the learning material from day one. And I sometimes think to myself, wouldn't it be wonderful to teach a class where every single student in the room already has the textbook and all the learning materials and we don't have to wait for people's OSAP to get in or convince them that they need to have a textbook. They've already uh, got it and we can get going immediately. I think that would be a great class to teach. So how can OER help? I think it certainly can replace text that we require uh, students to purchase and other learning materials that we ask them to purchase. Um, but I don't think you necessarily have to go immediately to replacing your textbook. You could run uh, the publisher textbook and a supplemental OER textbook side by side um, as a uh, first step into replacing that textbook to make sure that it meets all of your needs. Um, I think in every course we as faculty can identify different areas or different topics where we know students are going to have difficulty. I like to call those pain points. Uh, that's an area, even if we're not going to replace the textbook, we could look for and add resources uh, to students that would help them uh, through those pain points uh, to have a uh, the availability of a different explanation for that concept or idea than perhaps what our textbook has or what how we have explained it. Uh, we may be able to find OER uh, that has uh, multimedia, might be a different way that students can get into the content and uh, uh, learn and understand these uh, tricky concepts. 
I think it's also great to look at ways that we can add some supplemental or some self-directed resources. Sometimes our students come into the classroom and they don't quite have all of the skills that we thought they were going to have at the beginning of the course. And some students may need a refresher or uh, they may need to be introduced to an idea that they should have gotten uh, perhaps in high school or through other education, but they didn't. But we don't have time to stop what we're doing in our class and get them up to speed. So some self-directed resources can be helpful. And again, it's that idea we can often access a variety of media that's already been created that's appropriate, uh, you know, videos, audio, simulations, etc., that are great. And I think it's also, I'm finding a great way, particularly with the Thrives course that I teach, um, I can bring in other perspectives, other voices, um, so that the materials that I'm asking my students to interact with um, are, are show people and situations that they can relate relate to and I think that's important that our students be able to see themselves in our courses. So I want to net, let you know that there is actually quite a bit of support for you as you're starting or continuing your OER journey. So for example, one of the things that's available to you is this lovely LibGuide that's been prepared by the librarians here. It's as simple as logging into the St. Clair College Library webpage. Uh, they, in the first webpage, it's actually called a subject guide, uh, but once you get into it, you'll see that they're called LibGuides, and they have an entire LibGuide on open education resources with a lot of really great information for you. There's also the Learning Portal. The Learning Portal is a website that has been created uh, by the librarians of all 24 colleges across Ontario, and it's a fabulous resource. It has a lovely uh, OER toolkit available for faculty, but I encourage you to take a look at the Learning Portal because it has a, a wide variety of Creative Commons licensed resources for faculty, but also for students on uh, reading, writing, research, citation, study skills, um, uh, just a wide variety of things that are available. And that might be a source of some of that remedial information uh, that you want to share with students. They have a new section all about math, so it's uh, uh, really quite extensive and growing as our librarians across Ontario continue to add to it. I also want to let you know that on our uh, CAE, the St. Clair College uh, Center for Academic Excellence and Quality Assurance, has a wonderful website available and under the technology educational technology section we have uh, a number of resources available for you under uh, open education resources and and so there's a lot of this introductory information that i'm kind of going through really quickly is available there but there's a a, a lot more uh, information and uh, even some um, there's two kind of, actually there's three kind of uh, self-directed uh, learning opportunities on uh, better images, on uh, creating uh, an OER, and there's a, a um, material that I used for a workshop about how to use OER for pain points and for high attrition and high risk courses. So that material is there for you available 24-7. The material that is available on the CAE website, we also turned into an OER. So it's a St. Clair College OER about OER. And that's available through the eCampus Ontario Library. We're very proud that it's been listed there. And I do want to give credit to not only Nikolai, uh, and I have a difficulty to pronouncing his name, uh, Zurchev as well as uh, many other student rovers that have worked over a two year period on this particular OER. So it's really exciting to have students be co uh, creators of OER. I'd love to do a whole workshop on, workshop on that. I see uh, Anne Marie, you raised your hand. Did you want to ask a question? Yes, um, I'm just checking. I know you said you're recording this. Will we get a copy of this at all? Otherwise, I'm, I got to start writing notes. 
No, I can absolutely make it available to you. Oh, and, great. Um, and I don't know if you've seen in the chat, I've given you two documents. Uh, one of them is Quick Link. So all of the things that I am talking about now, these different resources, there are links in that uh, uh, document for you to use. So you don't have to go looking for them. I try to make okay, it as easy as possible. You. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Is there, um, I see there's still a hand up. Is there, have I missed uh, anything in the chat, Phil? Nope, you're on top of it. Alrighty, excellent, thank Sorry, you. Sorry, I don't know how to get rid of my hand. It's still there. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm I'm not sure either, um, but it's gone now, so lovely. Maybe there was something I was supposed to do. Oh dear. Well, let's continue. So let's talk about the OER, OER quest that we're on right now. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, my plan for kind of the rest of the workshop. I'd like to give you a few tips about what to search, how to search, and where to search. And I'm hoping that we will be able to use the links in the document that I've sent you to actually do some searches together. Um, and um, not just sit and listen to a presentation. So in terms of what to search, I do find that it's really tempting to start searching um, for some resources using like the name of your course or a general subject area. Um, when it's that broad, I find it's difficult to find good resources. And I think some people, when they start too broad, get discouraged. Well, I think OER is really great. I have to tell you one of the um, one of the weaknesses right now in OER is that OER is being housed or being uh, stored, if you will, in so many different places. OK, so that that yeah, there are many colleges and institutions uh, across the world that are holding uh, some of their own OER and making it available to the world through that way. Uh, there are some websites that are beginning to bring all of those resources together or creating meta searches so that it searches a large number of different repositories. But we do have a little bit of a problem right now where there are OER resources in a lot of different places, so it's not quite as easy as just using Google to start looking for something. So that's why it's a little bit of a quest. Um, personally, I have found using a more targeted approach is a, a better way to go, and that really where you should start is to to brainstorm, to develop a list of key terms or phrases about the course in general that you can use to begin your search, okay? That's more helpful. I think another really good approach is to use your course learning objectives or use your weekly topics or units in order to develop your search term. So instead of looking for things that are going to match your entire course, let's break it down into course learning uh, um, objectives or weekly topics units and use uh, key terms and brainstorm some key terms around those kinds of topics. So for example, over the summer, Celia McKay was working on and wanted to develop uh, a OER for um, INT 135G Entrepreneurship in a Global Setting. And so we did a little bit of work to go together over the summer using her course learning outcomes in order to create some search terms. She went off and uh, did the the search and kind of the background information as the um, I would call her like the, the the subject matter expert. And Nick and I over the summer acted as her um, uh, I guess OER designers, and we inputted all the information that she she gave us into Pressbooks, which we received from eCampus Ontario, uh, access to that, and we created a textbook for her called Entrepreneurship in a Global Setting, and it's now been accepted and listed on the eCampus Ontario Open Library, and that was really exciting. So one of the course learning outcomes was is determine how current issues and trends in the global economy and trading environment 
affect the Canadian economy. And we went down uh, together, we, we brainstormed a number of ideas and developed a chapter. Uh, chapter four is all about one of the one subsection of this learning outcome. It's about the trends, value proposition, ethics and social responsibility and the impact those trends are having on international business. So it was really an exciting project and a, a good example that we can look at of an OER that was developed using course learning outcomes. Uh, I had talked before about the idea that I used to teach Introduction to Canadian Business, so I, I played around with that in, in when I first got started with OER. Um, this is just a little snippet of a syllabus that goes along with the market research uh, course. And you can see here, I've just given you week one and week two, and the topics are the role of market research and the market research process. Uh, those are some of those subtopics that we could be uh, searching for and finding um, different resources. Uh, I, In some cases, you may be able to find a textbook uh, that has already been created. Um, I think that's um, optimistic to think that we're going to be able to find that. Uh, I do think uh, what is more likely is that we are going to be able to find chapters from a number of different uh, OER resources that have been created and we, we can put those together into a collection or into a new OER text that better matches what we need for our course. Now moving on to how to search, I want to just remind you of Boolean operators. I love Boolean operators. Uh, I have to remember to use them more often. Uh, the library, um, Kimberly D, she kindly put together a, uh, a resource for us on uh, some Boolean operators as well as some search information about the library page one plus. Uh, and how to use filters there. So I think using Boolean operators is a really good idea when you're doing search, as is using the filters that are included in a number of these different repositories. And I want hoping I can demonstrate that to you yet this evening. So just as a reminder, Boolean operators are and or not. So you can search for this and that, or this or that, this not that. Um, one I always forget to use, but is really quite powerful. Uh, if you have two terms that you want to search, if you put brackets around the first term, uh, the search will happen on that term first, and then the idea is within those results, it will search for the next term. And then that way you can get more targeted. And of course, any words that you put in quotation marks, it's going to look for that exact phrase, those exact words in that order, uh, in the um, whatever it is searching in. So some Boolean operators there, and I'm hoping that in the next part of this, we can go through uh, some examples of where to search. I want to do eCampus Ontario, BC Campus Collection. I want to start there because I think it's got really great Canadian and Ontario content there. And then I'd like to take a look at some of these other repositories like the Open Textbook Library, uh, OER Commons. Merlot is wonderful. We probably won't get to that one though. Merlot is wonderful because it has all kinds of different resources, not just textbooks, lesson plans, uh, online courses that you can adopt. Amazing. And then I want to just really quickly, if we have time, talk about images in YouTube. If we don't, I do have some information on that handout for you that will give you, I've got an instruction, link to instructions on how to search for images and other OERs using Google search and how to search for Creative Commons license material on YouTube. So if we don't get it, there are some instructions there for you. And eventually I will send these slides out to you as well. And if you have questions afterwards or you think of something, you know, next week, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll make sure that you have my email address. All right, I'm going to stop sharing that. Are there any uh, questions that anyone has at this time before we start looking at some actual websites? I'd just like to say that I like the idea of kind of mixing and matching to build a, a, a resource. Yes. Um, 
because in the past I've looked for books or open resource or or even free things and nothing ever matches exactly what you need so the exactly. idea of just taking parts and building your own is very appealing yes and and i think uh, that's some of what we did for that uh entrepreneurship in a global setting uh we took uh chapters from at least four different OERs as well as created some other resources um, in order to get the kind of information that Cecilia was looking for uh, because this course kind of feels a little bit like a current affairs course you know so the material has to stay fresh uh, I think it is more likely that we can find materials that fit from a number of different resources uh, and and for those areas that we can't find anything maybe we can start look at it at looking at creating some new resources and adding to what is available. So I'm, I'm hoping you can get the uh, list that I have given you out and are able to also access um, a browser of your choice. I like Google, but you're free to use whatever you like. I'm just going to go to my um, my Google and I'm hoping you're going to be you can now see my computer screen. Is that accurate, Phil? Yeah, OK, so just really quickly, uh, one of the links you will find is to the CAE website where we have a number of open education resources. <laughs> So you can see that we have uh, a, a whole section on finding OER that will have some more information that I'm not able to cover tonight. Copyright, better images, creating and adopting resources, dipping your toes in, how to address different uh, teaching and learning challenges with OER. That information is available for you to take a look at any time that you like. Uh, I have also a quick little link for you here just to demonstrate the lib guide that the library staff have put together for us on open education resources. Uh, it has a, a number of links to different kinds of information as well as examples of even more resource collections that you can be searching. The uh, learning portal here is their uh, OER toolkit uh, again giving you information. I like this this area that they, they have here. They call it curating and when I think about e OER that's really what we're doing is we're curating resources for our students uh, in kind of the first step and then creating where there are gaps in the system um, and I think that's a really exciting way to look at it. So I'm hoping you'll take an opportunity to join me in opening the eCampus Ontario Open Library. If you're not familiar with eCampus Ontario, it is an agency that is funded by the ministry and all of the institutions in Ontario, and their goal is to help us uh, increase the uh, digital learning opportunities, so certainly online courses, but they've also been really instrumental in Ontario supporting the IKE, the creation and the use of open education resources. And uh, we have this, I was part of the CAE for two years working on some virtual um, capacity projects in the area of open educate open resources accessibility as well as uh, building a cap uh, capacity for online uh, courses uh, and they were really there's a lot of resources available through through eCampus Ontario so I wanted to start there if you're on this Welcome to the Open Library webpage, I encourage you to click on here where it says Browse All Educational Resources. Now, the reason I'm asking you to do that is because it'll take you right into the Open Library and you can initially skip some of these things where they do have information about uh, programs and online courses in Ontario, as well as web pages and new blogs. But for our purposes, we want to focus in on the Open Library material. Now, if you want to search for something, by all means, you can begin. Uh, you, I'm just going to put in market research here for for a moment and see what comes up. And when I do that, I find that there are 
361 resources found. Some of those may or may, may be about research, may be about marketing. So you can see the very first one that came up here was uh, the OER Research Toolkit. Um, but this other one, the second one, Entrepreneurship Research Part 1, Understanding Market Research Strategies, that sounds a little bit more targeted. So here's where we could use some of those Boolean operators. We could add and in there, market and research. And ooh, we actually ended up with more, I think because I did not did it. I did not put capitals in. No, nope, still got even more. Um, I might want to go a little bit to go back to market research and uh, look a little bit differently. I like to play around with these and just kind of see what we get. Let's do some quotation marks there. Oh, 10 results, even better. I get I have a market research checklist, for example. Um, I think that uh, is a little bit uh, closer to the kinds of things that I was looking for. Beyond the search term at the top, you can also use the filters. So for example, we could look at market research in uh, a variety of different um, subjects. Let me see if I take that out. I'm just gonna do math for a moment, just so that you can see some of the other subjects. So this is really big. I'm getting everything in the free world about math, and you can see the, some of the different subjects. I could narrow this by choosing business and economy or engineering or science, for example. Um, I can also look for additional features like uh, uh, educator reviews and ancillary resources. Some of the textbooks are well developed and have instructor resources like uh, test banks and uh, slides, for example. Not all of them, but they're, that's beginning to grow. Um, different types, education level. So we could look, for example, for the college resources or aimed at the college resource, media, and different types of licenses as well. I do want to mention that uh, there is a special kind of license that was recently uh, created. It's an Ontario Cre Creative Commons license uh, and anything that you find in eCampus Ontario with that Ontario Creative Commons license, uh, the restriction is that that resource can only be used in Ontario by Ontario post-secondary students and teachers. So I will mention that it's a little bit of a different um, OER uh, license than, than what has been typically seen. I'm going to stop here for a moment and just kind of open up my um, MS Teams a little bit. Um, has anyone tried to do a search? Did you find anything interesting in a quick search? I did some looking around and first I typed in JavaScript and uh, it didn't come up with very much, but then mm -hmm. I, try, I tried typing in programming, which I thought would just be really broad. Um, and it came right into computer programming, which I thought was kind of surprising. Um, and the first one that came up was kind of an introduction to just programming without a specific language, like teaching programming without using a specific right. language in the book, which is pretty interesting. Nice. Um, yeah. I, I do want to say that I, I think uh, you will find more resources at kind of uh, the first and second year level than you may in the um, in the higher levels. OK, uh, so um, uh, certainly general education, first year courses, uh, we're seeing a lot of materials becoming available in that area. Uh, might be a little bit trickier, might, we might have to dig a little bit deeper to find more advanced materials. Okay, so I would like to go on. If, if you're not really finding a whole lot with the, um, with eCampus Ontario, right? I think it's a wonderful place to, to start and I really encourage you to look at all of those resources, but sometimes if you're brand new to OER, it's kind of fun to look at the BC Open Collection. 
And this is by BC Campus, which is the British Columbia equivalent of eCampus Ontario. And one of the things that they have done is broken down all of their materials already by subject. So you can go directly into business and look at 485 results that you know have to do with business. Uh, you can go and look at 111 results in the area of engineering. Oh, there's only four results, Phil, sorry, in computer sciences, um, but there's you know one in digital literacy. You never know, look, there may be crossovers, um, but I think that is sometimes if you're brand new uh, to go in and take a quick look at just what's available within that section and kind of browse a little bit. So for example, um, I've got some uh, business math, business writing for everyone, business ethics, uh, beginning Excel, uh, building a competitive First Nation investment climate, uh, a, a nice little variety already just in these first six of the kinds of things that are available. So it is one of the options that is listed in the document that I gave you. Um, Please take a look and share with us if you found anything interesting for uh, a course that you teach or for the program that you teach in. Anne Marie mentioned in the chat that she looked up IEP goals and found a good resource. Wonderful. Wonderful. I think another thing that uh, you are likely able to to find is some good information on assistive technology if you're looking at the the special education area and i think anna marie knows that i love assistive technology of all kinds i'm i'm gonna ask maria or steve have you found anything in the international business or in the business area that you're finding interesting and I'm curious, Linda, have you found anything in the uh, child development area? Well, I think the, you know, from the get go, I, I've um, when I first looked at this some time ago, I started it, and, and you mentioned not to do this. I started with the broad topic and, yeah. and narrowed it down. And so I think that, you know, the, the learning here is that start with the narrower topic and work my way up. So I've done a couple yes. of sort of very, very technical areas, you know, in supply chain and so forth. And I've seen some resources and I, you know, and just, you know, I just got to learn about how they can be utilized, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think that approach is probably okay. easier um, because now you can work off a syllabus and you can work upwards exactly. to, to, the, to the broader topic, right? Exactly, exactly. And I and I do think that in some ways that that works well, um, because if you consider OER is more than just the textbook, um, there are some really exciting things that you can begin to incorporate, such as video and uh, H5P exercises, for example. Uh, eCampus Ontario gives us this, uh, uh, Ontario faculty access to Pressbooks, which is the software that can create the actual textbook and uh, um, and house it and format it. It's actually a really amazing and easy to use program, surprisingly. But we also have access to the eCampus Ontario H5P um, studio and we're able to make interactive objects uh, things like um, uh, interactive presentations taking a video maybe it's a little bit too long and adding in some self-check or a knowledge check questions as you go along um, that's pretty exciting uh, drag and drop uh exercises that that your students can do and we can distribute them through either in our textbook uh, and that they read online or we can put those uh exercises right into blackboard and many of those exercises are being created by fellow uh, faculty and are being licensed creative commons that we can just you know, grab it and put it into a, a Blackboard unit that we're doing on one topic or another. Uh, so let's go on a little bit because I'll get distracted otherwise. Uh, I do want to share with you the open textbook. 
This is a little bit of a, a narrower repository. This one's uh, supported by the Open Education Network. You are going to find a little bit more American uh, content here, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, and uh, this has uh, 1,327, 29 textbooks. So this one is narrowly in, let's give you good textbooks. OK, or what textbooks are available. Uh, and so you may want to take a search there. <clears throat> I'm going to do introduction to business. And I'm already seeing some pop up. And let's hit go and see what comes up for that. And I come right away to internet introduction to business. Now. There are filters available here too that you can use the same as you saw on eCampus Ontario, the same as in uh, BC campus uh, collections. You can begin to use some of these filters. This includes different formats and different licenses, but when you come to, you're searching into in one of these repositories and you come to one, what I su suggest you do is uh, click on the read more uh, and look for the table of contents because sometimes there, you know, you may find things in an introduction to business textbook that you weren't expecting that also could be applicable to a different course. So, for example, in this introduction in, uh, uh, um, to business, I'm seeing competing in the global marketplace. There might be some good information there. <coughs> I'm thinking about the um, uh, entrepreneurship in, in the global economy textbook. Uh, one of the topics was uh, um, ethics and making ethical decisions. There could be information in this chapter. Um, I got a whole, a whole bunch of different things in here, and I think that's great. Now, one of the other things that's kind of exciting about OER is that you can read this online. You can download this into a PDF, or you can have a hard copy printed. You can have hard copies printed of the eCampus Ontario material as well for a very inexpensive price. Bill, I feel like I heard you uh, speaking. I just well, I, I just kind of laughed at the uh, printing, but I, I went in this open library, um, open textbook library, the one you're in, and I typed in JavaScript. Yeah, and I found the textbook I've been using. So um, it, it's been a, it's been available free online, but it's also a commercial trade book that you can buy. Um, but here it says it's um, Creative Commons attribution non-commercial which means that I could have basically took it, taken it and chopped it up and just made it exactly what I wanted for my course and I didn't know it. Yes, and I have done a terrible thing, I have to admit. Um, I closed my, my browser that I was working on. Oops. <laughs> so I wanted to go back to that, but you know what? It's okay because I can open up that OER uh, uh, links document and quickly get back to where I was looking. So um, you were talking about it on the Opus Open Textbook Library. Yeah. I just want to jump there for a minute so that everybody can see it, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, and no, 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 no. I need to share. And uh, what did you search for? JavaScript? JavaScript, yeah. There it is right there, eloquent oh. JavaScript. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So now um, let's take a little bit of a closer look at this because that's kind of interesting. Oh, here. The other thing we talked about the idea of looking at the table of contents, right? The other thing you can often see in the more section is what the conditions of use are. And this has been provided, um, this particular version, 2014, as attribution non commercial. So that's actually a pretty wide open license that we could definitely take a few chapters from this and combine them with another compatible um, open re education resource with a similar license. Um, is, the, is the one that's being sold to, to students or that is available uh, commercially, is it after 2014? Could that maybe be the difference? Well, that's a good question. Um, the one we're currently using is the third edition. 
Yeah, that's what this is, third edition. Um, yeah, it's still relevant, even though it's almost 10 years old, amazingly. But there, there were parts of it that I taught differently, that I didn't mm -hmm. like the way he approached it. And so I would actually teach it differently and explain to the students how I was doing it differently. And here it turns out I could have just rewritten the chapter. Exactly. Now, I, you're, you might have giggled a little bit about the hard copy, and I have too. Um, it, it, I believe it's the University of Western Ontario that will provide um, printing for um, textbooks that are listed on eCampus Ontario. Just to give you an example, I asked them to print um, the uh, Thrives textbook, a guide for successful students. And uh, the book I had in my mind that I was replacing was uh, Keys to Success, and it was being sold five years ago for $50. Um, I got a hard copy printed for like $6.45, and then I just had to pay a little bit of shipping. I think I ordered six copies and uh, got them for like, with shipping for under $40. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah. So there are sometimes, I like to have a hard copy, <laughs> um, but I do think reading it online is where you get the real power because if there are um, videos or other media, uh, H5P exercises baked into that textbook, you can access all of that right online. Okay, so the next one, I, I've got 11 minutes left. Uh, the next one I wanted to take a look at. Mm -mm -mm. I'm trying to think. OER Commons. I believe that's next on my list. <laughs> Um, the OER Commons, like as it says, has letter, literally access. This is one of those um, um, search engines that are, are search organizations that look at a number of different repositories. Uh, and I think that's really uh, fabulous. I like the fact that in OER Commons, right from the very beginning, you can use some of those filters. So I could look for uh, um, marketing, for example, and I could look for that as a business subject and choose community college lower division. This is an American site um, and uh, not that we have to worry for any standards, but uh, I'm going to leave that kind of blank. Uh, if you were doing high school, you might be able to find a standard and do a search that way and see what I get. I get 129 results and I'm I'm getting a couple of different things. I think that's what's kind of interesting here. It's not just textbooks. So I'm just going to scroll through this. I have no idea what's come up, but uh, uh, here I have a reading. Um, here's a lesson marketing yourself. Uh, here's a full course that is from North Shore Community College and it's licensed CC BY. So there are elements of this entire course that you could incorporate into Blackboard, for example. Here's a full course and a textbook from Lumen Learning on principles of marketing. Uh, here I've got, what is this one? It's another reading. Uh, and I find that really interesting that there's this kind of wider variety of things. Here's a syllabus that you uh, that is Creative Commons attribution uh, license so that it, you could build on that. Um, four P's of marketing, I remember that. Um, here's a nice uh, excerpt from a chapter. So as I'm saying, you can pick and choose between the kinds of things that you uh, use and have access to in some of these other kind of repositories. Uh, so for example, you can go by material type. In this area, we've got uh, textbooks, lab activities, lessons, assessments, uh, case studies, which is big in, in, in uh, certainly in business education, uh, some teaching and learning strategies, uh, interactive modules, all kinds of different resources. Um, so I don't want you to limit yourself to the idea of only doing text. All right. 
I'm going to stop sharing for a minute if I can do that without closing down everything. And there's about eight minutes left, so I wanted to just stop here and see if there are any questions. I hope this gives you some ideas of um, how you can start your own OER quest. I, I for me, guys, I don't I don't really have any questions. I mean, I really wanted just kind of the, the exploratory. Hey, wh what is this? Um, and I think for that description. I, I sense that I'm going to be pretty busy over Christmas going through this stuff, you know, when we're out of the uh, out of the semester and, um, you know, there's there's some opportunities for us to obviously dig in and get some of these resources. I have this one course, I may have mentioned this at the very beginning, um, that there's virtually none of the students have acquired the textbook and um, and it's 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 about economics. I mean, okay. that is a very broad topic. Yeah, and so of course I I know I can find a lot of stuff in there to to fill. Um, you know it won't be one stop shopping, but at least I'll be able to find a lot of the stuff that will be able to supplement. Right. Um, you know the 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 course and and know it. And and the one thing I, I want to learn more about is how to take advantage of some of the videos. I use a lot of YouTube now, but I I, I would like to see if there's other ed more educational videos that could be in there that I can then utilize and. I, I want that multimedia approach for sure. I, th I have a feeling that I might be emailing you <laughs> because <laughs> now that I know what you're interested in, uh, as I come across resources, I'm happy to share whatever I find. Um, I am going to share my screen one more time. Um, if I can get the right one. Just want to mention that Anne Marie's got her hand up. Oh, sorry, Anne Marie. Oh yeah, no, that's actually from a little while ago, but I did just type a text saying um, I went on that site. You were saying that, uh, uh, what is it, OEN? Because now OER, I'm- OER Commons? The yes. last one we went to? Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, and I was looking for just education, a textbook, and the textbook that I see is called Modifying an Open Textbook, What You Need to Know. <laughs> There's OER about OER out there, which is lovely <laughs> and, yeah. and, and can help us uh, as we build capacity to be able to do this. Uh, I hope that you can see my screen one more time. Um, yep. This this happens to be the guide for student success, the current one. I'm just going to see if I can slip a two in here because we are working on the second edition. There it is. Um, and I just would like to show you just a little bit of, of this. I'll just go to successful students have goals. And this is what my textbook looks like. So it starts out with a little introductory, uh, why is setting goals uh, important? And we created a video about that. Then we have some text readings. And in just about every one of our uh, chapters, we have one of these drag and drop exercises that can, students can do to check their understanding. Um, and it, it's really exciting all the different resources we were able to pull together. Um, I think that uh, makes this kind of textbook much more um, interesting and accessible for students. And I'll stop sharing. So is I that, can... sorry, is that okay. for um, the course that you mentioned that, yeah, that all is... students take? Yes, this is the Thrives program. Yeah. OK, that's awesome. So if I just can go back to the the chart table of contents, go, 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 go. So we created materials. We actually I started from College Success, which was from the University of Minnesota, and I used a structure that was actually created by Bob Burney and myself for workshops that we were doing uh, almost 20 years ago, but it was a really good structure. So we collected information and put it into a textbook format and then again into a course on all these different things that we know successful students do that new students can use as a model. And that's one of the things I found really powerful. I did not have to reinvent the wheel in order to be able to create create this textbook uh, for students and uh, um, 
I could bring in so many different resources and materials together and have a really solid uh, resource for students and a really solid course for students. Uh, and it wasn't going to cost them anything. And it wasn't going to cost us really anything other than the development time that I put in. So we have three minutes left for any last comments. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, and I'd, I'd love for us to fill uh, as uh, uh, people that are attached to CAE. Wouldn't it be great to get together with interested folks and maybe do some of this uh, searching together for OER um, as a, a, a next step or a next uh, professional development opportunity? Yeah, that would be really good. Could do some sprints, they call it. Oh, yeah. Where you look up resources and find stuff that you can yeah, start where with. You, yeah, where you kind of bring a group of faculty together and say, OK, let's let's all get together. Let's spend some time and we're going to look for resources in this area and you know, work together and see what kind of a list of resources we could put together. Oh, OK. <laughs> It's nice so, to do that in a program group, I think. So on that, um, is there a college policy or a an Ontario policy about moving more towards the OER resources versus the contemporary publishers uh, for textbooks? I don't know if there's a direction or if there's been a kind of push in this direction. I, I, th I think from uh, based on what I've heard from senior management, and certainly it was one of the things that was mentioned in an all academic meeting in the end of August, is this idea mm -hmm. that we are encouraged to look for OER. Um, and I and I think that if we even look around among us, uh, among the colleges, there are um, colleges around us like Fanshawe and Lambton that are doing OER in, in courses that we also teach. So we mm -hmm. want to remain competitive as well within our, our region. Um, yeah. Although most OER gets created with other institutions and it's a nice way we get a lot of good co cooperation together. Um, but I, I think it's something that is on everyone's radar. I think I saw Linda uh, typing there. Did you have a last comment for us, Linda? Sorry, no, I was responding to Anne Marie who was looking for the resources you posted and I just said scroll up. <laughs> oh, OK, thank you. <laughs> OK, well, then it's seven o'clock and I think we better close down for the night. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions in the future. Yeah, thank you very much for this, actually. Um, great, great lead in to start and, uh, you know, obviously uh, leaves us with some homework to do. Great, thank you. And I, Irene, I think. Um that somebody's still having trouble. Is it uh, Anne Marie? I think she's having trouble finding the documents that you share. Well, I will share oh. them again. Yeah, I'm the one having <laughs> trouble. I'm scrolling all over the chat. I cannot see any any resources listed. Yeah, it's right near the top of the chat, but maybe if you came in later, maybe you couldn't see it. Well, I'm uploading them again, so hopefully I you think can that's see why. them in the chat. Can you see them now? One of them. There's the other one. There yeah. the end. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Yay. Problem solved. <laughs> Thanks so much, Irene. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.